we're going to go ahead and take you through some basic programming setup on an Aurora 9 by Hi-Tech. This is their flagship radio at the time, uh, this recording, and um, it's, it's going to do a good job of showing you how easy and flexible computer uh, programming has become. So some of the other manufacturers offer uh, 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 programming interfaces that are a little more difficult, a little less intuitive. The Aurora 9 does a great job of walking you through uh, a lot of the basic setup features. So we're going to start off by setting up our model, naming it, and getting it ready to bind to the radio system. So let's go ahead and turn on our Aurora 9. first question it's going to ask you is, do you want to transmit? So since we're doing model setup, we're going to say no. And that's going to allow us to come into the main screen. Getting familiar with the main screen on Aurora 9, it's a really simple, intuitive interface. Uh, you do have trim indicators uh, on the screen here for all of your main channels. So as we make changes to the trim, uh, we can see uh, the trim indication. In this case, this channel is showing D or, uh, U10, U11, U12. That's up trim 12 steps, 11, 10. And it, as we pass the center part and mark, it'll do a loud tone. And then as we go up, it'll show down trim. So that's what those indicators are on the screen. We also have our voltage indicator. Uh, 7.5 volts right now is our main pack for the transmitter, so it gives us a status on that. With a line, there's actually a line there, uh, so you can see when you hit the threshold for your uh, transmitter voltage before you need to charge. And you'll get a warning tone as well. So it, uh, this has a touch screen interface, the Aurora 9 does, making it really flexible and really easy to set up instead of having to use some scroll wheels and things, which, again, a lot of those are intuitive as well. Uh, this is just, just really a super simple way to uh, interact with your computer radio. So the main uh, icons you have are your aircraft icon, your folder icon, and your tools or settings icon. To do a new model setup, all we're going to do is go into the main um, uh, airplane icon. At that point, we're going to go ahead and make sure that the, uh, the three tabs at the top, System, Model, and Custom, that the System tab is selected. And that's going to give us our option of Model Select. So let's go ahead and touch Model Select. And now I have a few models listed. We can scroll up and down if we had more than... Um, you know, the, the list allows, allows four aircraft at a time being displayed. We could scroll up and down in our list to, to view more. So let's go ahead and choose new. At this point, you can copy, uh, reset, or rename an existing model uh, in, in, from the interface, so it's really flexible. We're going to go ahead and choose new model. So yes, we want to change to the new model. And now it's going to ask us to name the model. We can go through and it's, it has a little touch screen keyboard. We can go through and say this is our video test model. So I'll go ahead and put in video. Test. There is a shift key which allows you to go to uh, the upper uh, the upper layer of each of the keys which gives you your numbers, gives you a lot of your common symbols you use and some punctuation as well. Uh, you also have a caps lock which allows you to then go into the uppercase so we can put uppercase on our, on our uh, letters. So we have video test, so that's what we want, so we're going to go ahead and choose enter. Now if I had made a mistake, just hit the delete key and go back and then correct your letters. We're going to choose enter, which is now going to bring us, please check frequency transmit video test, no. We're going to say no. Now what it does is it steps us through their automated uh, programming menu. When you set up a new aircraft, we can either do acro, uh, which is a standard or a conventional powered aircraft. We can go a glider, which is going to give us a lot of our uh, neat flexibility like crow or butterfly uh, setups on our, on our control surfaces and uh, some other capabilities that are specific to gliders, as well as heli, which of course will give us our swashplate options and everything else, our, our gyro uh, settings. So the neat thing about this is as you choose Acro, it's going to take you down uh, the programming options of what you would typically uh, have in, an, in a powered aircraft. So we're going to go ahead and just choose Acro. Select the Acro. Yes, we want to confirm that. And now we go through, and our first major question is wing type. Um, this is pretty straightforward. One aileron or two aileron setups, um, uh, meaning one aileron servo or two aileron servos. And then we have a one aileron servo and one flap servo, two aileron uh, servos and one flap servo, and all the way up to two ailerons and two flaps. Now there's a second page. One thing you want to notice if this, if you actually have your Aurora 9 and you're going through and, and doing the programming off of this video, you're going to want to make sure you check page two. And the reason I say it is I've, I've, in, in initial setups before on uh, delta wings or on flying wings, I was kind of confused looking for where that was at on the programming page. I couldn't see the option of uh, two ailerons um, and uh, no flats, but just two ailerons. So when I chose that, though, I didn't have the option of doing a delta mix. So I thought, well, I did two aileron. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and check page two, which is going to give us our type of wing as a flying wing elevon. So kind of a handy thing to note. Your second page of your wing type is where you're going to see your two aileron flying wing configurations, two aileron plus flap or two aileron plus two flap. So you can do that nice elevon mixing 
and uh, and get the flexibility you need there. So we're going to go ahead and just choose a standard uh, two aileron setup as if it's a, just a conventional configuration. Uh, we're going to say set, and that's going to take us to our tail type. So normal V tail or elevator. Uh, elevator would be kind of your your combat jet, which would have your your elevator and your aileron uh, combined in the back uh, in an elevator configuration. Uh, your V tail, of course, would be rudder vaders. So if you had uh, rudders in the back end on your on your V tail. Again, a mixing type is what it does, is it allows you to do some preset mixing. So as we choose our tail type, we're going to go ahead and say it's a normal, conventional, horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer. And we're going to set. And now it even takes you to engine type, single engine or dual engine. So if you have a dual engine setup, uh, you may need to use a couple of servos to control the, the uh, uh, engine control and uh, some, some, different, uh, some different configuration options there in the program or flexibility. We're going to choose a single engine aircraft. Do you have retracts? Um, no, in this case. Well, I'll say yes. Yes, we do have retracts. Uh, do we have an air brake? No, we don't have an air brake. Do you have a fuel mixture control? Well, since we're all primarily electric over at Two Brothers Hobby, in fact, that's all we, we focus on uh, uh, for our core uh, curriculum is, is all electric aircraft, we're not going to worry about fuel mixture, so we're going to say, no, we do not have fuel mixture. So now what it does is since you've gone through and made these basic automated programming selections, it's, it's led you up to the point where it essentially knows the basic type of aircraft, what type of servos you're going to be utilizing, what type of channel mixing you're going to be utilizing, so it dumps you at the channel function screen. So channel 1 is aileron, and that's going to be J1 off of the receiver. Channel 2 is ele uh, elevator, which is J2 off of the receiver. Um, and then on all the way down to channel 8. So we've got a couple of aux channels and an 8-channel configuration, auxiliary 1 and auxiliary 2, as well as all the way to our 9 channel, since this is a 9-channel radio, aux 3, which is null. Null meaning we're not setting them up for anything in particular. Um, we do have uh, our elevator, throttle, rudder, and aileron, and then, of course, our... Uh, our additional channels available. At this point it asks us, are you sure? If we say no, it loops us back to the programming. We're going to go ahead and say yes. We're happy with that particular configuration, which sets all of these channels now. So now this is pretty much how we're setting the model. We can always go back and change those, but now we can see which channels are assigned to which functions. We're going to go ahead and um, at this point exit out. It's going to take us back to model type and give us kind of a summary of what we chose. We chose a two aileron wing with a normal tail configuration, and we do have landing gear. So we're going to go ahead and hit exit again. And now we're back to our video test model, which has been created. At this point, we'll go ahead and um, uh, exit out of our video or out of our, our setup here. Since we were on video test right now, that's the highlighted model. We'll go ahead and exit out of that. It takes us back to our first uh, uh, model setup screen. Exit again. And now we're sitting in our video test, which is our brand new model we've just created. At this point, you've completed the basic acro setup for a conventional powered um, uh, non-glider uh, non type or non-glider configured uh, um, airplane. And at this point, we can go ahead and move to the next step, which is binding the receiver to the model. And then we can step into all of our servo setup.